Ableton is going ham with the updates. The beta updates are running right now are absolutely insane. They're adding like five more every day. Um, some of them are super exciting. So today I'm gonna touch on just some of my new favorite ones. Fuck, it is hot as shit. I'm in New York. Before we hop in, I wanted to mention that I have a completely free Ableton Live 12 course linked in the description. If you're new to Ableton or you're trying to kind of further develop your skills of uh, getting used to the software, that's linked down there. Also, I just started a super fire newsletter. Every month you guys are gonna get sent a free sample pack, a free Ableton device. I'm gonna tell you guys when plugins are free. I'm gonna tell you guys when plugins are on sale. And I'm gonna give you guys special discounts on, on things I saw and whatnot. So definitely worth grabbing, free sample pack, free Ableton device every month. That's linked in the description as well. Let's get into the video. The first device we're gonna be talking about today is called AutoShift. And what AutoShift is, is it's a Ableton stock auto tuner. Historically, you've always needed to use a third party plugin for auto tune. Um, furthermore, this auto tune device is actually super dope. So like you could easily switch this out for like Waves Auto Tune or, or on Terrace. It's super capable and it sounds super good. So Auto Shift works just like any other auto tune software. You put it on your track of your vocal or whatever you're turning. You can use it for synths, you can use it for pianos. And the cool part about this device is it's actually scale aware. So scale awareness, if you're not aware, is a new feature in Ableton 12 that's out now. And it basically allows you to lock your whole entire Ableton project to a master tuning. So up here we have D minor. And you'll notice down here, we can actually click the scale awareness button. And now it's going to lock this to our master tuning, which is D minor. If I gonna stay, she getting hurt. If I gonna leave, she getting hurt. What the fuck I'm supposed to do? Yo, feeling. This auto tune device has some super comprehensive features. I actually cover this device in depth in another video, which I will link up here. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about auto shift, go ahead and give that a click. The next device Ableton's about to drop is a brand new limiter. Now, if you're an Ableton user, you probably know that their limiter is kind of shit, to be honest. Um, it's got a very colored sound. It's not at all transparent and it doesn't really give us a whole lot of features. This new limiter, we have quite a bit of new features. Um, the most notable feature about this new limiter is the sound. So Ableton states that a new envelope makes this limiter's release actually a lot smoother. And so far from what I can tell using it the last couple of weeks, it for sure has a better sound than the previous limiter. If I gon' stay, she getting hurt. If I gon' leave, she getting hurt. What the fuck I'm supposed to do? Yo, I can't desert. Feeling like I need to get off this earth. Nah, but I can't. Need to think straight. A lot more transparent and a lot more functional. We also have a maximizer function on here. Uh, look ahead, and then if we want to switch back to the previous limiter, we can right click and select legacy smoothing. And now we're gonna work with the algorithm of the previous limiter. Once again, I covered this limiter in depth. If you're interested in learning more about it, it's gonna be linked up here. Next, we're gonna look at the new saturator that they're coming out with. So this saturator is meant to kind of accentuate the most prominent features of the Ableton stock saturator. So we have more of what we're actually going to be working with visible to us right away. We also have this color curve up here, which is going to allow us to crank uh, certain frequencies so we can low shelf or we can do a bell and kind of cook it a little bit. If I gon' stay, she getting hurt. If I gon' leave, she getting hurt. What the fuck I'm supposed to do? Yo, I can't desert. Feeling like I need to get off this earth. Nah, but I can't. Need to think straight. A cool feature about the saturator is that it actually shows us the difference of what we're adding to the sound when we're saturating. So if we look at this white line up here, if I gon' stay, she getting hurt. It's showing us what we're adding to the sound when we're saturating. Uh, we also have this wave shaper down here. So if we come up here and we select wave shaper, now we have all these different settings here for creating our own wave shape. Super hyped on the saturator. Uh, we can select high quality or pre DC filter. Um, I leave mine on high quality. Again, I made a comprehensive video about the saturator. So if you're interested, it's linked right up there. The next cool setting that Ableton's gonna bring to us very soon is scale awareness mode on audio clips. So as we can see down here now on our audio editor, we have the scale awareness indicator. Initially, I was wondering why would we want this on our audio clip? It doesn't actually affect the audio clip at all. What it's gonna affect is all the processing that's gonna come after the audio clip. So Ableton's gonna start slowly introducing some more devices that are scale aware. Um, and what this means is it's audio effects that we can actually lock to the scale. The only one right now that does that is auto shift. They're going to start slowly start releasing more when we lock our audio clip to a scale, it's gonna tell all the processing after the audio clip what scale we're working at. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Next, we're gonna dive into a new MIDI tool that they're gonna come out with, and that's gonna be the LFO MIDI tool. So this is gonna set an oscillating envelope for one of the MPU's parameters. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So we're gonna come down here to our MIDI transformative tools, and we're gonna select LFO. And let's leave it on pitch bend for now, and we're gonna turn up the rate. So basically we can have an LFO automating whatever we want at whatever rate, whatever speed, whatever shape. Um, and it's not just limited to pitch bend. We can actually come up here and use it for slide. 
or pressure. And we can even envelope it so we can have it kind of slowly creep in or slowly creep out. Pretty dope feature. The next little Easter egg they're sliding into the Ableton update is applying automatic grooves to your clips. So historically we've had the groove pull here and we've had all these functions, global amount, quantize, base, timing, random velocity. However, now we have this new little box up here. If this is checked on, this is gonna allow you to automatically groove all of your MIDI clips uh, without having to go into the groove pool and selecting them. The next cool feature we have coming is undo history. Under view, undo history, we can actually come over here and we can see the history of everything. If we want to go to a certain point where maybe uh, we had adjusted something wrong and we can actually come in here and load it back to that point. They also gave us a full length browser. So uh, sometimes the browser is up here kind of hidden away and it's hard to see. Um, if we come up here to this little orange box, we can now select full height browser. And now our browser is going to expand all the way to the bottom uh, past the lower menu. While we're in the browser, let's talk about auto tags. So this little blue eye up here, what this means is anytime Ableton's gonna scan our samples and automatically tag them for us, which is amazing because I was hyped on the tagging tool. However, it seemed kind of daunting to go through and tag all my samples. So now it kind of makes a decision based on the characteristics of the clip or the uh, audio or the wave file and tags them for you. Next, they gave us some updates on envelope follower and one of those is actually being able to sidechain from other tracks. So if we come over here to our little serum loop here and we toss an envelope follower on it. Now we have this audio routing tab over here. We're gonna click this arrow and we could sidechain and select our sidechain input. So I'm gonna use the kick. And now we can map the input signal of the sidechain to whatever functions we want on this channel. So let's say maybe let's map this to gain. So now the volume level of this kick is actually modulating our LFO within Serum. So this is a cool feature. I like to do a lot of like ducking stuff and kind of layering, kind of like flume type stuff. So this is a super cool feature for that. So now the tuner actually supports tuning system. So if we right click on top of the device, we can select sharps, flats, sharps and flats, or ignore tuning system. These are literally just the tip of the iceberg. There's probably like 30 more that have not been touched on that I'm gonna get to eventually, but these are the ones that I kind of noticed right away that are super exciting. When Ableton's gonna drop them, I'm not exactly sure. They're all part of the 12.1 beta update, but it definitely seems like they're making a very strong effort to update everything as much as they can. Uh, maybe they have some competition, who knows? But yeah, we have some super exciting stuff coming to us in Ableton. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Fuck, fuck, fuck.